Hi, and welcome back to another episode of the history of fan anime in North America. And uh, I'm going to be your host today, William Tao. And uh, today's episode is one of my favorite types. This is where I get to do a little bit of history and a lot of show and tell. So, hang on in. And then basically, uh, today's topic is going to be uh, anime art books. Okay. Now, the art book is truly one of the one of the best parts of anime because it really can be uh, universally enjoyed by anybody. I mean, it didn't doesn't really matter what language you speak, uh, whether or not you can actually even read the Japanese. You can pick up an art book and flip through it and enjoy all the artwork, the diagrams, the sketches, and all that kind of stuff that's in an art book, and not even actually really understand any of the dialogue and any of the you know the arrows pointing at different parts of the mechs and things like that. Uh, you can still enjoy that, and that's what I uh, really find really great about uh, uh, anime art books. Now, it's always good uh, in the early days, um, uh, especially even during the, the early meeting times. Uh, I'd always bring uh, different types of magazines uh, that, that, and also different types of art books uh, to the Trout Lake meetings, to the Douglas College meetings that we had, uh, uh, you know, in, in our club that we had, and. Um, the people would be just, you know, greatly interested to actually just, just flip through it, you know, you know, and, and thumb through these magazines and uh, look at all the different pictures. I mean, obviously, again, very few of us actually understood, uh, you know, what the text was actually about uh, in these magazines. But still, uh, you know, you could still take something like, a, like let's say, the Macross uh, Perfect Collection and still go through it, not actually reading anything about about the script or the details, but you know. Uh, but you can still look and marvel at all the you know the tech diagrams of and the uh, you know and, and the drafting like uh, breakdown of how uh, buildings are made and the machines the mechs the the guns uh, even character sketches and how people's faces and things are all drawn so it was really very um, very easy to enjoy and, and, and understand and, and get things out of art books like that um, now like in an earlier episode I mentioned about CDs. Uh, it was very difficult to uh, order art, the, the, these art books, especially if you're the first one uh, you know, trying to you know, get into these art books. Because uh, 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 the problem was that you didn't know what the book was actually really about. All you'd see is a little ad that tells you maybe how many pages it is, tells you maybe who the author is, obviously tells you like the ISBN number and, and the price, but it may not actually tell you um, what all the contents inside the book were. Uh, you know, maybe, uh, maybe almost all illustrations, maybe, you know, maybe half illustrations, half, uh, uh, you know, text, uh, you know, maybe, uh, you know, things about the author, uh, and even some books that, uh, you know, that, that, you know, are a particular author in a particular style and, you know, of a particular type of series, it still ends up being a total surprise uh, what you end up getting. So, these things are, you know, not cheap, some of them are very, very expensive, um, and the fact that, uh, being paper and, and, and being a book, it's also even heavier, so it uh, costs more for shipping, and therefore, uh, by the time you actually get it, you'll end up having to pay uh, you know, quite a bit more for these books. So, uh, you know, in, in the past, it was very, very, uh, you know, uh, very expensive, and uh, you know, and in some cases, a bit, a bit of a gamble. Now, later on, when anime started catching in a little bit, other you know, commercial stores and other kind of bookstores did start importing these anime magazines to put on their shelf, which was great, because then, then you could actually go up to the shelf, pick up the book like you would at a, at a you know, at a Chapters or, a, you know, or at, at a, a local, local bookstore and actually look at it, you know, flip through the pages to see if you actually like the content and then you can actually buy it. But then, as I said, only a certain number of books were available in this fashion. Sometimes you, again, you flipping through a magazine and you say, oh, okay, they got an art book for your favorite anime. And then you say, okay, well, I can't find it on the shelf. Could you please order me a copy? And then maybe they'll order you one or two or whatever. And then you, you, you know, you would know. Um, as I said, later on in, in, in time, they, you know, places like uh, Kinya Kinua, um, uh, our own Sophia's bookstore downtown. We had an Awase bookstore uh, of that chain open up at the at our uh, in our uh, you know Richmond uh, Chinatown Center, uh, which was uh, called uh, the Awase bookstore from the Yao Han Center. Um, even down in the states, there uh, you had uh, Nikaku Animart, 
which was uh, really early in ordering uh, books and that kind of stuff in. And, that, and, and even on a commercial scale, they even had a Books Nippon, which also ordered uh, a lot of books in. But again, if you didn't live in these cities and you didn't actually could go into the store and actually pick up the book to find out whether or not the book uh, is your style of book, you sometimes would have no idea what you're mail ordering in. And uh, sometimes it was a really big crapshoot. And uh, you know, you, you sometimes you uh, may not get that type of book that you're, that, that, that you're trying to order. But you know, it was sometimes a fun adventure. And, uh, and for that many reason, uh, you know, when you hit that, uh, you know, that book that you really like, it is something that uh, it gets, it gains a lot of sentimental value because you, you know, you've spent this much money on it and it actually is a very great um, uh, a prize almost. Um, I know a lot of uh, artists and a, uh, and a lot of uh, you know people who, who do drawings and that kind of stuff uh, really love art books because they you know they look at these art books and they study on uh, different uh, you know techniques and different ways that the, 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 that these uh, you know drawings can be made painted or sketched um, so you know these become invaluable reference books for those type of people who are into, into drawing and, and again that's why you know, art books tend to be you know so popular. Um, now, in this you know, modern era, very, very few of uh, these art books and, and whatnot are, are actually translated into English. Uh, so, and, and just you know, back in the uh, late 80s and the 90s, even very few uh, art books back then uh, were even even bothered to translate. So, but again, translation wasn't a really big key thing because as I said a lot of people like to buy these books uh, just because they just loved the artwork or they really enjoyed the anime and they would just like to have um, copies of, the, of this kind of uh, artwork on paper. Again, the internet wasn't really as the fast as it was and the scanners and things are not as high resolution as they are now. Um, and it was very difficult to get good resolution pictures or anything of the animes um, uh, and, you know, that, that you could get online. So the, really the only really good source of that kind of you know, good artwork and that kind of stuff was to go and buy the art book for them. Okay. Um, just to give you a kind of a, a more technical thing, at this time, um, you know, there wasn't a such thing as a Google picture, so you couldn't just say, oh, I'd like to, you know, look at Sailor Moon and then, uh, and then hit pictures and then, uh, all, uh, you know, a, a big uh, uh, graphic art gallery of, uh, of Sailor Moon pictures would come of everything from screen captures to, to uh, pictures out of a book uh, to people's artwork, uh, maybe like a, like, like a deviant art type of thing um, would all show up. But again, in this time, Google didn't function that way, and Google didn't even exist um, uh, in in that respect uh, uh, to, to to do that. So the only real way you could do, you could do that is to again get, get an art book. Now, the processing power of the computers weren't very fast. You know, most of the images or, or the, the the standard screen size back then uh, was VGA. So we we're talking six four, uh, 640 pixels by four uh, 480 pixels. And so if you print that on a 300 DPI uh, piece of uh, photo paper, you're looking at basically about a two inch by about three inch piece uh, picture. So smaller than a, than a standard five by eight photograph is, uh, is basically the best resolution that you could probably get on a, on, on a screen size picture. So not very big and not very, not very detailed. So again, uh, you know, the art book was the way to go. Um, you know, the other funny thing was is that uh, the artwork was, was so hard was that uh, we, sometimes we get like a, uh, you know, like a magazine. Oh, let's see. I'm just gonna pull up this one as, a, as an example. Uh, here is the uh, King of Fighters magazine, and um, sometimes uh, we would have such a hard problem trying to find pictures like this. It, we would basically find a way to to, to 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 take the picture and try to remove the words using Photoshop. Now, again, computers weren't very advanced right now, and and and, and the software wasn't advanced right now. Uh, at this time, you know, the, 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 the most advanced version of Photoshop was 4.0. And for all those people who actually use Photoshop, can you imagine trying to remove the word fighters off this page without using multiple undos and without using layering? So, think how many extra hours you'd be working on this picture trying to fix this one uh, without those two major features. Pretty tough, so you know we didn't we didn't have it easy back then. So that was sort of like the history of of, of why you know of art books and, and why people would buy lots of art books, and you know and art books were were really a, a a popular thing because I said you know people were getting into anime. Um, now as anime got more and more popular, 
more and more people got into um, you know into this anime style. And uh, one of the books I'm going to pull out right now is this, this particular one. Okay, some people might see it common. It's uh, basically it's a it's a copy of uh, X Men. Okay. Now, the, normally the, the the big thing about this one is this one is illustrated by Kiazamiya, the the person who does like things like Slot Mobius, for example. Um, uh, back in this time, uh, the, your two number one comics, and two still to to its extent today, uh, Marvel and DC Comics were the were, were your one and two punch. Okay, they basically dominated the market, probably eighty percent plus. Okay, um, and then everybody else, including Viz, Tokyo Pop. Uh, you know, get them, and everybody else uh, uh, basically were, you know, nothing. They did, you know, if they dropped out of the mar marketplace, no one would care. Um, and quite simply, all of, this, all of a sudden this explosion of anime came out. And really, there was no way for, you know, Marvel and DC to actually, you know, enter this sort of anime because they don't really have any anime titles. They, they were really good on their superheroes. And so, well, one of the ways that, uh, and one of the things that they, they, they did to jump onto this anime bandwagon was they got Japanese artists, popular Japanese artists, to come in and draw, you know, one of their comics or one of their characters in an anime style so that they can, you know, cash in some sales on uh, this anime craze. And so this particular issue, um, uh, Asamiya, uh, uh, basically, uh, help draw, you know, do the penciling and arting work, work for this Uncanny X Men. And if you flip through it, it's you know it definitely has a lot of, uh, for example, you know Dark Angel slash Silent Mobius like uh, you know like, like pictures in it, and it's really really good. Um, so that's an issue that, 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 that I really picked up. I picked that up at the San Diego Comic Con uh, because Ke Kiaz Mia was there doing signatures, and he was very, very you know unlike a lot of guys, he was very available. I mean, if he didn't show up at the, uh, you know, at the one booth for Marvel, he was at another booth, um, you know, uh, promoting, uh, you know, like different products, uh, you know, even different figurines and stuff he had for, for, for like Dark Angel at the time. And so he was really available and you could really, it was really easy to get things uh, autographed and, and, and signed from him. So that I, 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 you know, I was able to get a lot, a lot of good stuff at the uh, San Diego Comic Con for that uh, when he uh, showed up. Okay. Another funny story, actually, uh, about uh, Kiazmia is that um, uh, a lot of people say, that, that, you know, he, of course he does uh, Silent Mobius, but another person that also does illustrations um, for Silent Mobius slash Borgman and things like that is Michitaka Kikuchi. And uh, their artwork is, is very similar in many ways. But, I mean, if you, know, if, you, if you have a sharp eye, you can probably pick out the, you know, what, what the differences are. However, uh, you know, one of the running jokes was that you know, since you never ever saw Kiazumiya and Mr. Takuchi in the same room together, a lot of people have speculated they were actually the same guy. But well, you know, that was one of those sort of things that, well, without extra research and without the internet, you you know, who would know? I mean, you know, there isn't exactly you know something like you know Wikipedia where you can look up things and you know, heck, even Wikipedia, who knows what you're reading? Because if it's on the internet, it uh, can't lie, right? Anyway, um, so I, I really enjoyed the, the you know like the, the artwork from, from from those people, and then all of a sudden you know when I was at um, the Comic Con, one of the artists the, or one of the things that I managed to find was something like this. This is a comic called this. This is a doujinshi called Essentia, which is a Salem Mobius doujinshi, and um, it's done by an artist named Takia Fujima, and. He does a really great job drawing, um, uh, you know, Silent Mobius uh, t type artwork. And then this, in this particular issue, uh, don't Google this while you're at work. Uh, lots of tentacles. Okay. Um, so yeah, you know, again, uh, you know, th if you really like that kind of artwork from Silent Mobius, uh, you know, Boone, um, you uh, might want to get into the, uh, you know, these uh, types of art books, and of course, maybe some Dojinshi as well. On the topic of Jojinshi, again, I, I went to San Diego Comic Con and, and, and uh, Anime America and Anime Expo, and uh, you know, again at this time, uh, you know, Dojinshis were really starting to flood in because a lot of people would go to Japan, they'd go to like a Comic K or something, they'd just grab lots of everything that was uh, that was available at that time if it was you know popular in, here in North America, and at this time it'd be things like Sailor Moon and. Um, you know, anything that was, like, was a good video game, like Street Fighter, uh, you know, um, 
uh, you know, a king of fighters and all that kind of stuff, they were all very, very popular. So, you know, let's, you know, buy them all up, bring them back to a convention and then sell them. And, uh, you know, they got pretty expensive, some of them, but some of them, again, very popular. Um, one of the ones that I managed to pick up, which is a hard one to get, is uh, this one. This is a Space Cruiser Yamato or, uh, you know, uh, Star Blazers uh, Dojinchi. Okay? And you kind of think about it. Well, hmm, you have an entire battleship full of guys and one woman. Yeah, okay. We don't have to imagine what happened there, right? So, that's what the Dojinchi is there for, right? Okay. Um, so, and also, as I said, uh, you know, again, I want to get into a little bit of games. Uh, 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 I did a little bit of collaboration with uh, Happy Console Gamer. Uh, so again, if you uh, uh, want to search YouTube for some video game content, uh, do check out his uh, YouTube channel, Happy Console Gamer. But uh, I also like playing video games, and uh, one of the first video game art books I decided to get was this one. Okay, this is a art book for Street Fighter Two, uh, you know, Turbo Dash or whatever like a uh, the, the version. I thought, okay, maybe this might be an art book or something like that, and have lots of illustrations. Um, but no, not really. <laughs> it actually is an art book that has uh, basically how to do the different moves, uh, some special combos that you can do. Um, there is a really cool um, uh, Street Fighter II uh, uh, poster in here uh, showing um, uh, 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 M, well, well, if you like, depending on which version you have, uh, yeah. it uh, is you in front of a you in front of a you know street fair two you know ammunition type of, type of poster so you know again has lots of good stuff again the books at this time really had uh, put a lot of different material into the book which made it a you know a worthwhile purchase uh, to get all those little extras in there. Um, again, it also has a little bit of Dojin artwork in there, so I guess uh, what they've done is they've let the viewers um, put in you know, their, their artwork and that kind of stuff and put that in. So again, because again, the internet doesn't have at this time a deviant art type of website where people could put, post up their drawings and that kind of stuff. So what a lot of people did do is they sent their drawings and their fan work uh, into these uh, uh, production companies and they would put them into a, uh, a section in the book. And even the ma popular magazines like Animedia, Anime V, uh, New Type all had uh, fan art sections where people could uh, post that kind of stuff up. And it was kind of, kind of cool. Okay, so that Street Fighter one didn't work out well. Later on when I ordered more, I finally hit on one. And I'll get to that in another episode. So you wanted to go down there and hit subscribe and then you can uh, you know, get, get, get that episode uh, notified to you when you when I get that up, okay? Um, but back to this one again. This was one of the first books that I got for King of Fighters. This is another one of them, my, my favorite anime uh, style uh, uh, video games that I liked. Uh, and this one was was a hit, okay? Uh, this one actually contains all the pictures that, 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 and whatnot. Again, one of my favorite ones, which is uh, which is what I based my uh, name and my character icon on, is uh, Kyo here. Um, and again, King of Fighters, my favorite one still is 94. Again, my nickname is based off of the 95 one, and you can see why uh, if you look at the logo uh, sitting above me. Okay, so um, again, uh, that was a really good art book for that. Uh, again, for those people who are looking for you know that kind of artwork, um, again, that was a good collection. Anyway, the, the, one of my favorite books that I ended up picking up is when you get to those really expensive art book sketchbooks and, and when they really make a deluxe, you know, packaged version, uh, uh, it, it becomes even harder to get and, and probably a little more treasure. Uh, the one I want to get into is this particular book. This is the illustration of a book for an anime called The Record of Lotus Wars, okay? Now, I'll make a mention of it right now. Uh, one of the ways that you can participate in, uh, on my website is, is to, uh, uh, you know, to, is to get, uh, send in a, a ball cap. This is, I, I like uh, uh, wearing caps, and uh, I'm wearing the uh, Seattle Seahawks today, and uh, you know, in a tribute to the uh, Legion of Doom. Boom. Okay, D and D, D and B, right? Okay, 
Uh, my organization is going to be a record of lotus words, all right? And also on, on the same level, I brought out this uh, record of lotus words book. It's called the the uh, uh, Yutaka Ibuchi uh, illustrations book for record of lotus words. And it is a great book. I mean, if you're looking for uh, you know sketches and, and, and painting and pastel that, that type of drawings uh, from uh, from him, uh, this is a really good compendium of of all his different artwork and whatnot. Um, you know, again, something like you know, this uh, art picture here. This is from the uh, from the CD cover. Uh, it was one of my favorite pictures from him. Um, uh, you know, a really great book. And, and again, at this time, you know. I was used to seeing Dungeons and Dragons on Saturday morning cartoons, and I kind of, you know, and even you know, as a D and D player myself, I'm kind of going, well, this is really kind of stupid because you know, you're never going to get like Tiamat uh, chasing your stupid cavalier around, and like you know, magic users that like you know probably have intelligence less than like nine. Well, what the heck is that going on? I mean, be a thief, good grief. Anyway, so uh, when I saw you know, record of lost words. And it, trust me, if you just you just want to have a quick peek at it, check Record of Lotus Wars, the OEVA series, and just look at the first five or five minutes or so just before the opening credits. And you tell me if that doesn't scream Dungeons and Dragons, okay? You know, you got the elf, you got the, uh, you know, the, 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 the clumsy little fighter guy, you know. You got a, a, a little a hobbit, you got your little dwarf guy wielding the axe, and you got the little sly thief with the shifty eyes, and you've got a quiet magic user that looks like he hasn't had enough to eat for a while. You know, I mean, you know, kind of stereotypical things of of, of some types of uh, an, uh, you know kind of D and D characters, but now they've done it up in a nice anime style. And uh, you know it, it, it doesn't uh, you know has a really nice you know not not exactly shall I say Lord of the Rings type of story but I mean definitely it's a you know a good conquest uh, you know medieval type of story uh, about this you know this cursed island called the record uh, you know called, called Lodos Wars or, or the, the basically the, the the island of Lodos okay and it's a short series only thirteen episodes in the first OVA series and I definitely you know w w w if you're into that kind of uh, gaming or adventuring type of thing uh, it is a it, it is by far uh, still one of the best uh, classic adaptations of Dungeons and Dragons that you can get. So if you want to get a mood for a game uh, for for a, a game night like that, definitely take a look at this anime. They made a TV series of it. They they changed the characters around a little bit, um, but definitely the the OVA series is 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 a better uh, uh, start and better fit for that. So again, Legion of Doom, boom, D and D. Okay, Record of Lotus Wars. Check it out. Okay, so, uh, if you want to leave me a suggestion or a comment, uh, again, right below is my website, and uh, there's contact information on there. Again, you can send me comments, uh, maybe make a suggestion for another episode, maybe add on to something of an episode that I've already uh, commented on, or maybe you want some clarification on something, because now we're up to a few episodes now, and uh, I'm trying to build on to a base so that uh, if I uh, never need to in an episode tell you to you know look back at that episode about uh, about how to purchase uh, CDs and stuff like that in our time because uh, that's you know the same way that how we had to b purchase these particular art books uh, at this time and if you want to go back to that episode where I start talking about Sailor Moon Dojinshi then I can go backwards and, and refer to that so I'm slowly building up a base that I can tell more, uh, more stories and then uh, in future episodes we're going to get into uh, the, all the various different things that uh, Arctic Animation had worked on uh, we'll get into some convention talk and maybe even a little bit later we'll get into some things like cosplay and whatnot and some of the issues that, uh, that, that we have uh, with fan subs and more modern uh, uh, you know, issues uh, with how anime has now shifted from how we focus on anime and what we pay attention to but again you want to subscribe so that when those episodes come out you get notified and then you'll be able to, 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 to stay tuned with that all right so as I like to say, and one of the episodes that uh, we will get into is uh, definitely when we subtitled the uh, Heavy Metal Algine. And uh, in dedication for that, the, and the announcer for that always goes, see you again.